Okay. Okay, well we want to welcome you all here for Jerry Anderson's lecture and just a little bit about Jerry. I should have Vaughn come and introduce him. <laughs> this lovely wife Vaughn is sitting here in the front row and this is Jerry Anderson. He was born in Las Vegas and he moved to um, Silver Reef in 1979. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he used to follow your dad around when he drilled his drilling wells all over the country. Yeah. yeah. So he um, loves the Old West. He's done 90, as of this year, 90 life size sculptures, or larger than life sculptures. Mm -hmm. 90 bronzes. So those are all over Utah and other Oster, probably. I know they're all over Utah. Yeah, uh, around the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, life, in Utah. the life size ones are. Yeah. He's got. He's known for sculptures. They're all over the place. And then he, what I love about it is he really researches them diligently. He knows the story of the character he's doing. He knows the time and the place and the history. And he makes them as historically and physically accurate as he can. The details are amazing. So he's done three. Well, more than three, but. He's done the statue garden, or sculpture garden over by the um, history, the museum over there. He completed that with, they dedicated that in 2002, the Washington City Monument Plaza. He did the Relief Society sculpture, which is right out here. That was in 2001. And the Veterans Memorial statue in the Veterans Park here in Washington was in 2005. So we're really blessed to have a lot of his work around us here in Washington. So I will turn the time over to Jerry, and well, actually, I should put in just a little bit of plug for us first. <laughs> Washington City Arts Council, if you're interested in learning more about us, we have some cards over here. We'll talk to you. We're sending around a sheet. You can sign up if you want to be on our email list for events and workshops. We teach a lot of workshops, and we do events like lectures. And then we also have our first gallery show featuring the artists that live right here in Washington City at the Redwood. So that opening is October 15th, and that will be in here as well. So, take it away, Jerry. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you appreciate right. it. Well, we appreciate your time and willingness to come. Thank you. Uh, this is my boy, Dolan. He's the one that wrote this book that I'm going to push on you guys. And his wife, Lisa, I guess she went to the post office. And then my wife, Fawn, who's been in the health of my life. I'm really, I love all you guys, okay? but I'm really disappointed in the turnout we have today. I think it's ridiculous. I don't know whether it's the advertising or whether it's just people who don't care about art anymore or what, what's going on. I, I mean, artists have so much to present to the world and then when people act like that, I know they're having a run, and they hold that in high esteem and they're doing something else and all, they're just too busy. That's my feeling on that point. I <laughs> agree. <laughs> Now, I was born in Vegas in 1935. That makes me uh, 80, almost 87 years old. And uh, it's not good to grow old because uh, you wake up in the morning and you find things growing on you. Your, your ears start to get big, you know. And I think the reason your ears get big is you want to hear more and you can't. And so they grow old. Anyway, I've done a lot of work. And this will probably be my last little uh, talk until we raise at least four or five hundred people to come here. But I don't know if it's my deodorant or what it is. Uh, but this book, Dolan wrote along with his wife, and I'm just going to take each piece. I was hoping Terrell Cole would be here, the mayor. And so we'll get right into this. Pieces. And then we're going to have a question and answer uh, after I get through with my little spiel about some of this stuff and how it works, how it works, and how I put it together. Here's one. Have you ever heard of uh, this one right here? That is uh, Old Sorrow, the monument up Cedar. Have you heard about that and how it came about? No, I think he's Okay, here's the deal. There's a president up there, President Sheridan of the college. He came down in the 80s and asked me to do something for the university up there as their model. And, uh, and I thought I'd have to do a big Thunderbird, but it turned out to, to be a story that 
And that's why I like history, is he wanted to bring the history of old sorrow back into being. And so he said that there was a horse, <laughs> but, uh, well, let me go back. They, they wanted to build a building up in Cedar to house the first, uh, uh, in fact, they were told that if they had built this building at a certain time, they would give them the money to have a university, not a, not a university, but a, 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 a new college up there. And so they wanted to do the horse that uh, they went up in the mountains and uh, for lumber. And uh, when they got up there, it snowed in on them. And so what they do is they put the lumber in the back of the sled and then they'd pull it. But it snowed about three or four feet on the way back from Jensen Sawmill up there. And so this horse they had, it was, uh, it was a gray percher on the horse. Uh, and so it would, uh, but the guys just couldn't get back down to town. And so they were worried about the timing. And so this horse took it on itself to just uh, go through the snow drifts and make trails for the rest of them. And it did that and it sat down on its haunches and then it'd get up again and go through uh, the trails and then, uh, <coughs> Anyway, they found a way back with this horse, and so they wanted to honor the full sorrow. And so that's when the chair came down and said, could you do the horse? And so I had to figure out, well, how can I portray that horse in the... Uh, Let's take the cover off. Let me, uh, let me give him a little I hate covers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it nice, though. You can look through that cover if you want. Okay. Oh, you're right. Okay. So here we are. Yeah, here we go. Old Sorrow. Here's a better picture of it right there. So anyway, I depicted the horse pulling the sled with the lumber on the back of it, and the two men were coming, uh, telling the rest of the people to come through. And so they made a trail. They did get the lumber, and they went down, and they built the first building, and they were they were given the college status by building that first building. And you all know what that is, don't you? Anybody that don't know who that is? What page are you on? The river. Seventy-five. Yeah. Seventy-five. Seventy-five. Yeah. 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 The rebel statute. Uh, Richard Whitehead was the one that wanted a, a theme for the rebels down at the Dixie College. And so he approached me and, and asked me if I wouldn't do uh, a sculpture of a sculpture that I had already done called uh, Retreat. And uh, so I did that. And, and as you know what the world's turned to today, some black guy came out from the east and said, we can't have that. And so they tore it down and uh, hid it away for three years. I finally bought it back. But Vaughn, would you tell them a little bit about how this history got started here in Washington? and how Harold Clough, the mayor, and also Deputy Moon got this started, this whole thing about history and all these bronzes. Come on. You can sit here. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want me to get away from anything. <laughs> what I wanted to do was, this is his very first sculpture in California, or a babysitter came and she said, I'm taking a class in school with clay and then they're firing and all. And he said, that sounds kind of fun. So he did this Indian and she dropped it and broke off the one ear. And I was gonna throw it, was gonna throw it away a hundred times, but I thought, you know, I better keep that. He was yeah. so into it. <laughs> uh -huh. And this is what he works with. And it, you want to feel it, you can. It's really hard. Before he does his sculpture, he has to heat it up and then put it on. And he's kind of wore his hands out. But. Now, one lady who asked me what kind of clay, that is an oil based clay out of uh, Cotbank, New Jersey. And I used to buy it by the time, but it is an oil based. It never dries. Yeah, and he can pre use it. He's got a big barrel and he keeps it in. But he keeps giving it away. And so, we're getting down to it. Anyway, these are a couple of little pieces I thought you might like to see. He 
Okay, they got little stuff too besides the big. But um, we met Priscilla and Harold way back. And they had moved to, they had retired from their business and moved here to, to Washington. They little, bought a little old house. And then they were called to Chile on a mission. And then they came back and they were called to Nauvoo. So they named this little house the Nauvoo House. And they went around and took pictures of all the old houses and all that was built so that they could sleep you know, do a duplicate of it, and that was fun. Uh, they came on the scene with us in about 19, uh, well, Priscilla, they were both into history, but she was really a bluff buff on it, and they were the ones that got the museum started over on Telegraph and 100, and uh, they were so excited about it. And, I mean, they, their whole house was history. We'd go over there and it was just books and books and pictures and organized this and that. And then Priscilla was losing her eyesight and she was into making quilts. I think she made over a hundred quilts being half blind. She just really got into it. But anyhow, we had the privilege of going to their home and having dinner. And they always had pecan pie. They had two big trees. And they just loved it. We had fun doing our music with them and everything. But we both, they, she asked us to play and sing, but I kind of lost my voice. And he's got a couple of numb fingers from the shoulder surgery. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> this is Cahoon thing really got started in 1992 with all this. And they raised the about 250000 to restore this little building here. And so it was in. And Harold got thinking about all the men that they honored. And he said, we got to get a woman in here. So that's how they raised the money and get this woman out here with the baby and all the little things that we have uh, It's got a picture of the handcart company. And uh, I think that's about it. They just were really instrumental in doing it. And then Harold Cole ended up giving them a key to the city. And he was the big influence at the time that we were able to work with them. So. Didn't she sound? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here's uh, three people that I did for the uh, Temple of the Manti. Uh, it's Chief Walker. Remember the Black Hawk War? Well, Chief Walker was a good man at one time, good Indian at one time, and uh, he gave them all that property in Manti, plus the temple grounds and everything, to the White Eyes. And uh, so they wanted me to do three figures, and so I showed them the time when the uh, Indian gave them that. This is over to a con. Uh, it's, Richard Whitehead is one man in town that can really find the people who's got the money. He raised millions of dollars over to, for the college in Dixie. And uh, then he went back east and raised the money for that at BYU extension back there. And so if, you, if I had wanted anything done, I'd, he'd usually come to me, but he knew all the people all the people, and so he could raise money like that. In fact, he just, we just finished one called Dan MacArthur, Dan MacArthur, uh, it was his incentive to put him in bronze, brought him forward in history, and so I did it out of bronze, uh, so that. And then I did, uh, what's his name, Hireman Gail Smith, over two of them. That's please. Just keep turning. <laughs> I don't know where I am. Okay, 81. Okay. 81? Perfect. Okay, 82. I was called on by Split Rock over there at the Sunday subdivision Sunday. to do Sunday. this uh, Indian and crawling up this imitation cliff, which is about 30 foot tall. And I had steel put, I had, I had put steel pegs in there, and then I, and then I welded that wow. to the Indian. And 
and you'll never see it unless you buy one of those homes over there. <laughs> Nellie Unthank at Cedar City. Now that was a girl that was brought about by a historian, what was his name? One of the apostles' brothers or something. Anyway, Nellie Unthank, if you, any of you heard of that, okay, well, <laughs> you sat on the back row. <laughs> Nell, Nellie Unthank was a girl uh, whose family was uh, on the Pioneer Track here, and they were caught up into the snow before they got to Salt Lake, and uh, she, uh, her legs were froze, and when the people from Salt Lake got to them, they had to cut her legs off. And I think she lost a sister and a mother and a father. But anyway, they, uh, President Sheriff wanted me to do a sculpture of her. So the thing is, I tried to figure out how am I going to do a girl without legs. So what I did is I put her shoes around her neck with a, a happy dance. And that's how the Cedar they did to call it. Next page. Come unto me. Is there anyone that hadn't seen that one? Come unto me at the mortuary. Okay, the story on that, these are brief stories, and we'll have a question and answer to you pretty quick. But anyway, uh, I had a, a friend by the name of Bob Carpenter, and he sold for me. And he went into uh, Ted Spielberg's place down there and, and asked him if they wanted some sort of a monument. And they said, well, yeah, we do. Uh, and uh, so I went in there, and I said, well, what kind of monument do you want? And they said, well, how about Jesus holding a sheep? or this and that and the other. And I said, I'll tell you what, let's all go home and pray about it. I was really spiritual then, so we all went home and prayed about it, and I still didn't have an answer. Nobody had an answer. And I, and just like that, like turning the lights on, I said, well, why don't we have an old, old woman going, she's gonna die, and she's gonna hit the veil of death, and then on the other side, we're all told that we're gonna come out perfect in, in the arms of Jesus. And so I did this one, yes. and it's been uh, it's been quite a quite a piece down there. And we do sell crystals of this piece in crystal. And then uh, Hiram Smith had a daughter, and Hiram Smith was a multi-millionaire. You have to know these millionaires if you're going to do anything really great. And luckily, I've been able to do that. And so Hiram Smith had a daughter called Charlene Smith, and when he put up the twenty million dollars up there. SUU, his daughter was killed in a car wreck. And so he said, if I build all this, I want Sharwan Smith to be right in the center of the Sharwan Smith Center. And that's what they did on that day. Uh, pioneers with the shovel over at the college. Uh, this one. And then I did the, uh, the soldier across the street, I guess. World War II soldier, and then I did the girl out here. What I did is used a model from our town, and she was heavy set, so I trimmed off some of her. And then I put a baby in her arms, and then I did a multi alto bass relief around the side, uh, showing her, showing the public what she did as far as being down here as a, as a promoter of the cotton and stuff. And these are the four across the street. Okay, we have Robert Covington, Samuel Adair, Peter Nelson, John B. Chester, Chester, and they have uh, clothing. But to do something like this, you know, you need uh, you need education, don't you? To do it right, you have to know. <laughs> you have to know anatomy. I. I Okay, so I used to smoke a 20. I was 20 years old and used to smoke, and I hope they have that in heaven, because I loved it. But when I was smoking, when I lived down in California, I had this match box thing, and it's a match. And it said, draw me. And I had a picture of a woman, and so I drew her and sent it back to whoever it was. It was uh, the famous artist course back in Westport, Connecticut. <laughs> have you taken it? No. no. But but I then, want to. Anyway, so they sent out another deal, and I there was a test on uh, composition and light and dark and this, and so I, I did that, and, and luckily I got 100% on that. And so they sent out a guy, and I remember back when I was 20, that's a long time ago, 
And uh, he came through the door and says, well, yeah, we can do that, but it's going to cost you $700. Oh. And I said, well, who's the teacher? And he says, Norman Rockwell. So <laughs> I, I signed up immediately for it. At 20, you knew who he was. But in the meantime, I was in the steel works, and I was working all day long, and I'd come home at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I'd work until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning because I was exhumed by it. What they would do, they would send you uh, four of these books, and each one of them, you started with a pencil and, and a pen and dark and light, and then they got into uh, total anatomy, which is uh, uh, you had to know the knowledge of anatomy, every bone in Latin and every muscle in Latin I had. And, and, I, and then uh, by showing me that, they showed me how to do animals and birds and how birds and animals relate to each other. Like this is your radius, this is the ulna. And so if you didn't have that, you couldn't unscrew it. Uh, you could do a lot of things. Birds have it because they, when they fly, their wings go like that. And so I knew all of that and they, told you how to do it. And then, uh, <clears throat> anyway, it was quite a course, and it took me four years to get through it. But with that knowledge, uh, you learn about folds, spiral folds, drape folds on a drape, how they come down. They, had, they made you learn all of that. And then, <clears throat> oh, spiral folds and diaper folds, like you take a diaper and hold it up on the ends, how they come like that. And then pressure folds like this, pressure folds on the fabric, and then, uh, <clears throat> and then gravity folds like you took a blanket and you just threw it on the ground. They taught you how that would lay as, as you see it, and how to put it together with different things. John D. Lee, remember John D. Lee, our boy? He was a good, he was a good guy and he was a bad guy. Uh, he was one of the four that was supposed to go over here but it was voted down by what he was uh, involved with with the Meadow Mountain. This one right here <clears throat> is one over there at Split Rock again. The reason they call that subdivision uh, Split Rock is they took two 60-ton rocks that were split in half and brought over and they wanted me to do a sculpture of an Indian putting petroglyph writings on it. Well, what happened is there was a guy from Disneyland or some, some big shot. No, he was from... Uh, Laguna uh, pageant of the art, and they said, could we use that? Now, do you have, has anyone been to that place, Laguna pageant of the art? Every year. Okay. <clears throat> well, then you know uh, what they had to do. They had to get a life-size guy and put up all of this stuff, and then what they do is they'll take a picture of an old happening, uh, you know, like the Big Boy summer. or something like that, and then here summer. you are in the setting by the ocean and down in a kind of a nice little amphitheater, and then they shine the lights on that picture, and then the orchestra proceeds to do the music, and then you look at that for about, oh, half a minute, and then it's gone, and then they do another one all night long. That's one of the two living artists. That did this. They were all dead except me and my friend. <laughs> what year? What year was that, Tom? I forget. Yeah, nineties, something nineties. That was a good piece. This one, I they dedicated this piece up at Cedar City, uh, recognizing the uh, two, two, uh, what was it? Twenty two, uh, two hundred twenty second triple deuce soldiers out of Afghan Afghanistan. It's up there in here. And then I did some stuff over in Duchesne, and we go on and on and on, blah, blah, blah. Now, anyway, I did it over in Duchesne, and a life size eagle with the uh, Liberty Bell under it, and then some other stuff. And then this is down at the uh, hospital. It's the Tree of Life. That took uh, 4,000 leaves and 4, uh, 40,000 lights. And I made it where the lights go on with a system in the trunk with a door on it. And then all of a sudden, at night, these lights go on. And they change color in front of the hospital down there. I didn't. And this guy, Robert Gardner, he's down here in the center of St. George. He was the first man to come up with the 
first stake in the center of St. George and so that's how he depicted it. He's in front of the, the bank down there. And this is old Jerry. Okay, I was wanting Terrell Paul, the mayor, to be here. I want him to explain what we were going to do on this roundabout out here. And uh, he wanted uh, uh, two oxen on the roundabout out there as you come in by the Maverick. Is that the Maverick station? That big roundabout. He wanted me to do two oxen, a big wagon, four or five Pioneer, which would have been really good because that's where they, before Abe Aaron, those guys came down. Uh, but uh, it didn't happen. He can, should not raise the money for that because I'd already sucked him out of about a half a million. Uh, where's the ox now? Huh? Where is it? It's out of my place. Is if you want to come out and ride him, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that sheriff guy up in Cedar City, I did, this is a long story. <laughs> See that rotunda there? That's up at Cedar. And I did 12 of the most famous educators for the students there. And uh, President Sheriff commissioned me to do that. So I went to work for him up there for five years as an inside artist. And, and it took me five years to do these. People here, that's some of them. Anyway, it's Isaac Newton, John Stuart Mill, Leonardo da Vinci, America, Madame Curry, Cedar Foles, yeah. and, and all of that. You had to know that. Okay, here's uh, my boy Dole. Didn't you do Play Doh, Dole? Yeah. yeah. That's when he had a body that you couldn't quit. <laughs> and then there's Socrates, Thomas Jefferson, William Shakespeare. <laughs> now, when I did those, uh, I had the neat deal of having the president, uh, President Bush, come out and dedicate them. And uh, he said, Jerry, I, I like all your sculptures, but what about this guy? <laughs> Which one? Shakespeare with his tight pants. Yeah. Oh. And then I, we were going to say, they were going to speak that last moment of the woman's ever not required. And, um, I thought, well, you know, I got to be on stage with, I got to be on stage with him for an hour or two, so I, got, I better go to the bathroom. So I, I went there, and then all of his bodyguards followed me right in there, so they all know what I look like. <laughs> Francis Webster up in Cedar City. He was a sheep man, and he was really quite known by his. And then there's a Henry Lunt in front of the. And then there's a couple. Of, there's that still over at the college. Uh, what, what I did there is they wanted a, a woman uh, uh, listening to the girl that just won a first place ribbon. It's called first place. Oh. This is the flint that's over in front, or in the museum over at uh, Dixie, Dixie College. The phone I donated. The, the Indian Flint, can't you call it? And then this is just one of my granddaughter. Does anyone know who that is? Brewster. Yeah, yeah. Who is that? Brewster. Well, what did he do? Very famous baseball player. Well, he played for the Padres, and he was probably number one pitcher. And so Richard Whitehead, knowing everybody in the world, said, Jerry, would you? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and so he was famous for that pose right there after he threw a ball. And uh, so I did that. And the funny thing about that at that time is I uh, was putting on all that clay. <clears> oh, <throat> no, I had to go to a show somewhere. And when I come back, his whole guts fell out <laughs> in, the clay, in the clay. And so I had to redo that. He said, yeah. I really watch your armature. Each piece had its problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a harvest dancer I just did for no reason at all, just to keep busy. Oh. And then Anna Sazi, Anna Sazi, <laughs> over oh, there at the uh, Splitter Hawk again, is a working balance. Mm -hmm. They said they wanted a, a Native American woman, so I did that, and I had her wringing out her hair, and when she's wringing out her hair, the water goes through the hair oh. down into a pond. Anna, oh. Anna, sorry. Oh my gosh. 
And then President Sherratt, myself, and a bust of him is in the Sherratt uh, Museum up there. Cedar. Sherratt died not too long ago. And then these are the crystals, that, <coughs> the, uh, the image of the uh, come on the VP. And it's uh, the crystals come in two or three different sizes. And I worked with a guy, and that's the guy from Disneyland that went up to Canada, and he said that. So we had him take glass from Germany, which is no, a non-leaded glass, and then they burn that in with a laser. And I worked with him for a long time to get that just right. Because if you do that with a leaded glass, it would burn, it would break. And that's why they're kind of expensive. <clears throat> well, anyway, and then we do a Christmas too. Uh, the thing is about being a sculptor is you got to do it right. All you guys that had to work, you have to do it right. This guy right here was a chief pilot over at uh, Sky West. Tell us a little bit. Sky West. Sky West. He was a chief pilot. He don't look like a chief pilot, but that's what he was. <laughs> he taught everybody how to fly those things and how to crash them. <laughs> He wanted me to go down to South America with him in one of those Bombardier airplanes or whatever it was. And he picked one up and I said, no, I don't trust you. <clears throat> so him and I went over to, uh, he, was at, he was working for somebody at that time <clears throat> and he wanted to get this piece of machinery back. So we went over to the Henry Mountains and uh, he says, I think I know where they're at. They owe me this and I got to get this piece of machinery back. So we were in a little cub and uh, I was in the front, like a big pilot, and he was in the back. He says, I think we can land on that road right there. And I said, what road? <laughs> that one. And, I, and he said, well, you look for stuff and I'll do the flying. <laughs> and so we come in and as we come in, we hit a tree and broke off about a foot and a half of a wing, bent up pretty bad and bent. And then, and then we were still going, I said, hey, give us some gas and I think we can make it down in there. And, and so we went down in the bar pit and, and then we gave her some gas and come back up and there's this guy <laughs> standing there watching us do all of that. But anyway, we took some duct tape and put it on back and stuff. And that's why I didn't go to South America with him. But anyway, we're just full of history and friends and we appreciate all of that. Rusty, we know him from a long time ago. He let us go into the Navajo Nation when he was taking care of that. As a, what were you, Rusty, over there? I was the director of the health in the Utah part of the Navajo Reservation. Anyway, he gave us permission. And there was only three or four white eyes that did that. Over to Navajo Mountain, we flew in there, and then uh, they had what he called Pioneer Days that Navajos did. And so I was able to take pictures of all those Indians, and that's, that's what I have to do. I guess in closing, I would have to say that. Uh, you have to be learning to do what you do. You have to know what I've just explained. I've seen so many people want to do a sculpture and it turns out really bad because they want to save money or they have a friend that can do it. One of them is over in Hurricane, a bad sculpture, and one of them is over in Canab, a bad sculpture. Sculptures are around for a long time, thousands of years. And so it has to be done by a good sculptor. There's a lot of good sculptors in Utah and all over, really good sculptors. So don't ever try to get somebody that can do it. Okay, now, any questions? Hey, Jerry. Yes. Could you tell us about Melinda there a little bit? Melinda Cavington, yeah. <clears throat> Fawn, do you want to talk about that? Oh, okay, I'll talk about it. <laughs> Melinda Cavington. <clears throat> She was a, a pioneer that came down here and uh, with the Mormon militia, Mormon what, battalion? Yeah, yeah, Mormon battalion. And she would uh, do the laundry for uh, the soldiers when they were acting. And she did a lot of neat things uh, for that cause. And so they wanted to make a monument over at her house. She got, where she lived. Yeah, the Covington yeah. home. Covington home. Um, <clears throat> they couldn't raise the money, so I said, well, I'll do a small one. And so this is one of them. By the way, where did this come from? 
They had it at the Covington House. Oh, okay. we're doing an exhibit at the museum for the Covington home. So Carmen Snow uh, brought it from there and we got it in the museum. So now, she asked me to bring it over for your... Now what's your name? Mike Parlis. Now what's, what's your game? What do you do? I am the president of the Historical Society here. Rest on. We got us a good present. We appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you coming. This is great. No, this is good. This is my last eulogy. And I got to record it. That's what's good about it. <laughs> well, anyway, I guess that's it for me. Is there any questions you'd like to answer? I can make a comment. Jerry's too modest to mention, but he's an accomplished painter, pilot, banjo player, <laughs> singer, and fawn plays with him. And I just can't believe that God gave one guy that much talent. But I appreciate that. We got to see each other more often. <laughs> now you had a question. Do you have anyone have a question about anything to talk about? Or, yeah. How long on an average does it take you to to do a sculpture? Okay, good question. Uh, when I feel good, it takes about two months to do a life-size monument after you get all the history and stuff together. And the way I do it is. I have a welding shop there in my house and, and studio. And so I got a welder and a cutting torch and everything. So I start with a steel armature. Well, actually I start with the head first. So I can see what he looks like and the gesture and what he's gonna do. And then I'll set that aside. And then I like to do six foot three figure. So I have a round steel base that I usually put them on. I have a steel rod to come down as a skeleton. And you gotta be pretty close. You know, whatever this guy is doing, you gotta be sure that it's right. So I try and figure that out. And then when I do the armature, I'll go ahead and put his head on and I'll ask him to, if the body's okay and he'll say yes. <laughs> and so I'm gonna get a, a screen, excuse me, I'll get a uh, screen of like a wire mesh and put it around that. And then, <clears throat> I hope I didn't go out of focus. No, you're good. I say as I do a lot. But the thing is, then the wire around the steel mesh, and then I'll take an oil based clay, uh, clay and uh, then put it around it. And I like to have the mesh where it's about an inch and a half to where the finished steel is. So, because if you have a problem with your gestures, then you got to go in and cut it. And the oil based clay is uh, very uh, well, it'll burn. So, you got to be careful that you don't start with fire. And then I've done that before. At any rate, so there it is, there's the clay, and then I go ahead and, and finish him up. And then, <clears throat> then I'll take a cigarette uh, uh, lighter fluid, and where it looks bad and, and scaly, I'll take and rub that around, and then it'll make it smooth, just his face smooth and his hands. I like to put blood veins in and stuff like that. Okay, now I'm through, that took about two months to do that. And after that, the foundry, it's too big to move, so the foundry people come down from Salt Lake or Provo. One of them is Adonis Bronze, and one of them is Bear Bronze. I choose Bear Bronze because they're closer, and they work with me pretty good. And they come down, two guys usually, and they'll make a mold. And so what they do, I'll use this little guy. This is my first one when I was... That was just regular clay. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, I was about 18. But anyway, so then there's the big life size monument. And here they are, and they're going to make a rubber mold on So they pour rubber all over. It's expensive. <coughs> what is that stuff, Dolan? They call it something. I call it a $100 gallon. But anyway, they put the rubber over it, and they have to put shims around it because they can't make that in one piece. They want to hollow. So remember all. So then, then they put a mother mold over that of hemp and concrete plaster paper. They put shims around, and where the shims were, they pull it off. Now you have the image in the mold, the rubber mold. And the, mother, the mother mold goes there, and this is the rubber mold. Then they'll pour that with hot wax, and they pride themselves on getting that really thin, so they'll pour that out before it solidifies. And then you got a quarter inch of my image. And so they pull that out, and here's the image. 
And then they dip it in a ceramic slurry that goes around it and it hardens itself into a rock. And then they leave sprues coming up so that they can, <clears throat> after they put it in the oven at 2,000 degrees, the wax disappears. It's called a loss of wax process. After the wax disappears, and they pour the molten bronze in the hard core. And then, then when it cools, all, they have to break all of that stuff off. And then they take all of the pieces. She came in about four different pieces. Then they take the welders, the heliarch welders, take all those pieces and put it back together, and they have to weld it all the way around. That's why those things are so expensive. It takes a foundry about three to four months now to get something done. And then they grind that off where they welded it, and then they take a sandblaster and sandblast all of it. And then what they do is they'll take a chemical. The artist tells them what color they want, with different colors. But they use a, a torch after it's a sandblast. You can't touch it. You can't touch it or you leave your print. So as they're careful, they'll take the burner a torch and, and heat it up. It's got to be, you know, heat it up and then they take uh, different chemicals and spray on them and that will give you a different color or what they call a patina. These are different patinas. Mm -hmm. And then they put it on a wood base or uh, if I, it's a life size case they will keep it there and then I'll go up and bring it back and then it's all hauled. Everything's hauled that you see. And then we put them in place and and the little ones, I've done about maybe 90 or 100 of these little pieces like that to sell on the side to keep us going in food and stuff like that. And we've done really well so far, but uh, the books, if you can either buy them or not, but I'd, I'd say if this is my last speech, you should buy them. <laughs> They're $75. Can I have this? Yeah. $75? Melanie's going to take it. Books for sale, and would you be willing? I'm sure you'd be willing to sign them. They're signed. They're signed already. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. What? Um, did you do the Juanita Brooks statue? Juanita Brooks. I want to say George. Saint George. Saint George. Oh, Juanita Brooks. No, I didn't do that. I think that may have been done by uh, what's her name? I don't know. Blood. True Blood. She was here. There's people that, uh, she was a good sculptor. She still is, but I think she's kind of like me, getting old. <clears throat> but she's done a lot of sculptures too, and they look really good. Rusty. I had a chance to meet Fred Adams up here, the guy that did the Shakespeare Festival mm -hmm. before he passed away. And we were talking about doing the bust again, doing the Shakespeare. And he said, I don't think anybody has ever captured what William Shakespeare would really look like except Gary Anderson. Yeah. Oh, good for him. Good for him. Good for me. What's <laughs> the question? Very good. Yeah. Do you ever get sentimentally attached to any of them that you do? No, I beat him to death when they're It's just business. Business. <laughs> <laughs> There is one piece, <clears throat> people ask me what my best piece is, it's in the book. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> uh, it's called, um, what is it called, the engine? I guess you're not going to tell us. It's sitting here, yeah. putting petroglyphic writings on a real rock. <clears throat> it stands about this Legacy. Legacy. Like you want to write the engine writing on the rock? He's putting petroglyphic writing on yeah, yeah. And the reason I like that is because I like the Indians. I like to go out and get arrowheads and pottery and stuff like that and look and imagine stuff so I can come home and do the artwork. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's the one I like the best. 1,000 AD. 1,000 AD. That's when they disappeared, the ancient Anastasia Indians. And I feel sorry for them, but they were here long before anybody else. In fact, we're going to do a, a Native American. Thinking maybe Native Americans showing the pioneers how to irrigate with the pot would be a good I'm going to hold you to that. You better get to me. I want to get 
it for a couple more. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, question, I'm just going to tell you, uh, we met uh, Jerry and his wife years ago in uh, Yorba in California. They had a beautiful home and they used to entertain. And uh, you had a fiddle player that come over there that was really good, and a guitar player, a young guy. Bob and uh, And they were always just a good hosts, and we had a, it was really nice. And everybody that was in that group, me being one, I've admired your work so much. And you have done such a great job, and everywhere I go, I look at the statue, and, and if it's really good, I, I think that's got to be one of Jerry Anderson's. <laughs> and I go over, and there it is, and I'm, I just admire what you've done so much, and appreciate all the, you know, that, that I've known you, or been able to appreciate all that you've done. That tree that you done down in the uh, in front of the hospital was amazing when I first come there and so this thing that it's uh, how you accomplish that I don't know but it's really nice I play golf uh, every Wednesday with uh, Jerry Atkin if he worked for Skywood anyway tell him he's kind of cheap <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Atkins I've, I've asked him to come out and buy some but he don't <laughs> tell him that. He's cheap. He's tight. But, but hey, I'm going to pay you whatever you want for your compliments. I'll pay you when you get out of the room. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very hard of hearing, but uh, uh, I know. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Man, I've just followed you ever since you come up here. We, live in we just moved up here five years ago from California. But every time I come up and go around, and every statue I see, and I and all that you've accomplished, that just is really amazing. Well, that's, I appreciate that. So, yeah. when's the next party you have? Yeah. <laughs> well, good, good deal. I don't know, maybe, uh, Rusty? One of the favorite pieces that I like that, that you've done is called Over Easy. Yeah. Can you tell us how you come up with that idea, where that background came from? Yeah, well, Over I'm Easy so now, on. the market is about that big. And then to fix the uh, cowboy, Broken a steer, <clears throat> and then the mother is coming after him, I guess. And I like action in my figures. I like the best action you can get, so that's why it's crazy. But usually, what we find fun and I, people are calling now and saying, "Well, I have this. My mother and dad just died, and I got this little bronze, and I want to hang it and that." And so somebody did that, and they put it over at the college. That didn't want it, and it's over at the college now. It's called overusing. But I like cowboys and I like Indians. I haven't done any nudes yet. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I'm working on it. <laughs> you can do a lot of my art. Okay. You know. <laughs> any other questions? Blindfold. I got one to just clarify. Um, being with the Historical Society, one thing we're doing right now is just trying to get an actual stories put on the website that we're about ready to get turned out to the public. But uh, the story of the Lee statue, from what we understand is, is that in 2010 it was not put up with the others, that it was put in storage. The story is that you bought it back and then the family, the Lee family, came and bought it from you and then it went up to New Harmony. Um, is that part true? Well, I'll have to try and remember what you just said and see if that's the truth. Well, anyway, I created them, and then they had meetings, the media, television people from all over came down and did a story on it, and it caused quite a turmoil, because he was involved with the Middle Mountain Massacre. <coughs> but he did good stuff. John D. Lee did, did good stuff, so they're still lovers with him, and he built up, uh, I mean, you'll have to read his history, but he was really good. So anyway, uh, they voted no on it. They had too much pressure. They didn't want him to be shown over here. And so, what, what did we do with it? I forget exactly what. The family bought it, and then she got ill. And yeah, and then George Staley and Don Young, part of our historical yeah. society, caught wind of it, went yeah. up and got the statue, brought it back, went before city council 2014, and 
once again tried to get it put back up and they were shot down. So they put it in the corner of the museum as close to the thing as we can. That's where it sits now. Yeah. So they I, I've forgotten what pretty. That's that's what we're well, looking at. We've got out. so many pieces. I know. Oh, there, there was a woman from California. I told the media that I was going to burn it. <laughs> so I can make something else. <laughs> and so a woman from California bought it. She paid whatever it cost. And uh, and I don't know where it went, but See, John D. Lee started that mission up there, New Harmony, mm -hmm. that mission. And, uh, and so they had, they had it up there for a while. Yeah. And then where else did they have it? I wanted to put it over there at Lee's Ferry, but that was not on either. It, they wanted to put it in at the fort. It was supposed to be a museum at the library, but it never happened. That's why it sat in the family storage up there in New Harmony. And, and like you said, she got sick and ill, and mm -hmm. George ended up. Yeah, but he's over there. He, he did good. I had uh, while I was doing that. Well, I didn't show you the big piece, the, the uh, horse. This is a different thing. But uh, a guy by the name of Clark Powell wanted me to do the world's largest stagecoach, and that's in the front cover of that book, in the very front. Open it up, and you see that. Okay. So I I thought it. it it's going to be 120 feet long and 30 feet tall, and that all bronze, and it's going to go up on top of a mountain. And so what he did, he brought uh, for his promotion to me. He uh, and so anyway, he brought uh, Dale Robertson, the guy that does the Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. well, he, he brought him up. Hey, how are you doing, Dale? He says, Hey, Clark, where's your money? <laughs> but anyway, we went up to Cosmopolitan and ate, and then he brought also the curator of the uh, Jurassic Park people up. He had some big dignitaries. That's him now. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he, he wanted to do that, so I made a, a sculpture at the top of the Wells Fargo in Silver Reef, and it's nine feet long. That was the mock-up of what I wanted to do. I, just take each horse and point it up into the big stuff. We went along with him and uh, we built a building down here. Ronnie, my brother, owns it, that house up on the hill at the time. And then at the bottom, we built a big building to house the big stuff. And this all cost a lot of money. And Clark says, Well, here's the money. I got the gondola people, and we're going to put a gondola up there. And they're going to do it for nothing, and this guy's going to do it, and this, and then, so I was caught up into it. It's called greed on my part. So we spent, with our time and everything, about a half a million dollars doing all of this. And when I come right down to it, Clark didn't ever have any money. And, uh, so the piece that would have cost about $10 million, but nobody could raise that money. It's probably a lot more right now. Well, Clark died in the, me in the meantime, and uh, the whole idea stopped. And, and so did Dale Robertson die. <laughs> but anyhow, we watched Wells Fargo on TV, we love his show, and his wife has done a beautiful book of him, and when he first came to the door, I was expecting this good looking. <laughs> you remember me? Yeah. <laughs> And here's this old, 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 old man, <laughs> older than any of us, and pure white hair. And I was so disappointed. Oh, he was Dale. Dale? Dale Robertson? <laughs> you know, he was cute. But anyhow, it's just funny how we get older. And, oh, yeah. We've had a lot of a lot of good times. We've met a lot of important people in the world, and I, I'm thankful for that. And uh, anyway, I appreciate all of you guys for coming. You're probably the only yeah. friends we have. <laughs> <laughs> Artists have a, a different personality. I remember a guy saying, you know, I talk to him, and I don't think he hears anything I say. I think he's just doing I said, I can guarantee you he's not listening to anything you're saying. <laughs> he's studying your eyes or your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now Jim here, Jim Breeze, he was one of my students and I gave him some clay and he went home and said, hey, I can do that. And he come back to 
I'm not having to criticize and it was flat. It was flat. It was flat. <laughs> <laughs> so he brought back the day, yeah. But anyway, it's been a pleasure, you guys. And again, I really appreciate you guys coming out and, and sharing this with us. And that's the Thank end of it. channel that we just set up for the historical society and uh, we've done one lecture that we're editing to put on we're, we're getting better at it today turned out really well but we'll be putting that on there next week then so on the washington Wa city historical yeah. society YouTube you, pop? you just hop on there and you can see it and it's you don't great. even buy it you just automatically it's public <laughs> So it'll be for free. You can just watch it on YouTube anytime. Would you like it on? Would you like it on a disc? On a DVD? You want a copy of it? DVD or a disc? Just watch it on YouTube. <laughs> but I can do that right off of these here because I'll download it to my computer. Get you a file and put it on the stick, and you download it on here. Okay. Yeah.